I will sign whatever form. I'll sign whatever waiver. I don't care about that. I'll sign whatever. Just let me fight. Please let me fight. Is it true? Is it true? Tell me. Is it true? I've, I've, I've been there. I've been there. I had to do this to my own kid. Shut up! Don't hurt that neck. This is going to go a lot longer than 10 seconds. Shut up, man. I understand. I'll sign whatever. I'll sign whatever waiver. Just write it up. I'll sign it. Is it true? Oh, it's true. Is it true? We have a liability here. I don't want you paralyzed. You don't need to be in this place. Be smart. We don't want a lawsuit in here. I said shut up. Yeah, the second time he told me shut up. I'm sorry. We, we can't let you do this. We cannot do this. Dude, we cannot do this. Everything is in his name. He's got to make the call. Insurance, building, everything is in his name. He's got to make the call. I had to do this to my own kid. I don't want to do this. Don't worry about it. But it's not going to happen tonight. You've got to get that looked at. Obviously, there's something major wrong. You've got to get it fixed. This is not going to happen tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you want to do this. I know you want to win this. And there's no doubt 
with a broken neck or not a broken neck, you can kick his ass no. any day of the week. I can guarantee it. But it's not going to happen like this. I can't be responsible for that. You got experience. He's got to make the call. He's above me. He's got to make the call. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's, if you would, please. Stay back. Don't hurt your neck. Don't hurt your neck on the way out. Be careful. Be careful. When I come back, I'm taking everything you've got. Excuse me, come raise my hand because I am advancing to the finals of the Weaver Cup. of the 1%, the PWI Ultra J Champion, and soon to be the holder of the Weaver Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, our first finalist tonight, Logan Easton Moreau. This, and this match we're looking at right now is going to have a tough time to handle them in the finals. 
Chet Sterling, of course, is a lot of people have called the odds-on favorite in this year's tournament. But really, the story of the tournament in a lot of ways, Cecil, has been this new aggression and this new sort of prerogative of Ethan Sharp. Right, it's like Ethan Sharp, he went from being this guy that felt entitled to everything to a guy that really felt like he had to prove something. And it's a, a total 180 shift in his mentality. We got a cover by Chet, who, man, let's be honest, Chet's a heavy favorite. He was a favorite at the start of this tournament. And Ethan, he, he feels like he's got something to prove and he's got a chance to tonight. Chet Sterling, of course, advanced to tonight's Final Four with victories over Roy Wilkins, Aaron Epic, Ethan Sharp advanced with victories over Mitch Connor and Juke Joint Lucas Calhoun. And I want to bring up Logan Easton Moreau, the Ultra J champion, never short on words. It was earlier in the tournament when Logan got that initial buy earlier in the tournament. He even had some comments for Ethan Sharp. I believe he called him the Kmart version of Logan Easton Moreau, the discount. Yeah, the one his exact words were the food stamp version of, of Logan Easton Moreau. And I think so, things like that stick in the craw of Ethan Sharp. I think he's got a lot more pride than he lets on. Nice arm drag. And Chet, I'd, I'd venture to say Chet's had probably the hardest road so far in this tournament. Like you said, they had to get past Wilkins and Epic, two very hard fought battles. And two completely different styles, too. Wilkins, more of the technician. Epic, uh, just a, a rough and tumble brawl. I, I apologize, folks. Uh, just, I, I'm a little bit flabbergasted with how this thing has played out. Uh, so many people uh, on social media this week, when we talked about the Final Four, a lot of people felt like Smith Garrett and, and oh, the, the knockout tour that it had been dubbed on social media. A lot of people felt like Smith Garrett uh, was going to come in and surprise everybody tonight. And it, as it would turn out, it looks like Logan Easton Monroe had a surprise for us. Uh, oh, sharp man, he got wiped out. Chet Sterling threw the rope. I'm sorry, my, my mind is somewhere else. I mean, this this guy's a friend of mine, and I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm sorry to anyone that was expecting to see two semifinal matches tonight, but we cannot let somebody compete hurt. Uh, that that time in the business has passed of, of guys toughing it out and, and wrestling hurt and, and doing serious damage to themselves. Uh, I, 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 I just wish he'd have told us. I wish he would have told us. Yeah, I mean, he did it. For better or worse, did a hell of a job hiding it from everybody. And now this is the kind of fight Ethan Sharp wants, man. That we saw that the pace pick up and turn into a high pace deal. And that's going to favor Chet. But if it's dirty, man, I'm going to give the edge to Ethan Sharp. Chet Sterling fires away on the outside. A second one for Sharp. Oh, Lord. But this is kind of deep waters for Ethan Sharp. Say he gets past this match. He's never been in, this, in the situation where he's had to go twice or go in these long marathons. So he's going to kind of dive into the deep end if he's able to get past this with Chet. Not to mention, you know, going up against Logan Easton Moreau after what we just saw, another situation that Ethan Sharp has never been in is he's never been a crowd favored. And against Logan Easton Moreau on this night, I think he would be. Absolutely. As, as shocking as that is, I think against Logan Easton Moreau on this night, cover. Oh, we got two. I think Ethan Sharp would be the crowd favorite. Yeah, I mean, as hard as it is to say that, I'll tell you what, Ethan Sharp's look great here tonight. Uh, I think we, like, even after he, he beat Mitch Connor, we were still like, okay, everybody has a puncher's chance, everybody gets lucky. He did the same with Lucas Calhoun and myself. I'll admit, even I'm still doubting the kid, but he's looked great in this match. Yeah, that running punch. What do you call it, the bus driver? The bus driver uppercut. It's claimed two victims already in this tournament in, in a pretty short amount of time, to be quite honest. Right, and two tough guys made a, a travel veteran to Mitch Connor, who I've never seen get knocked out by anybody other than Ray Kandrak. Sharp charges, Sterling. And again, the pick is quicks up, and it goes to Chet Sterling. Cross body only got two. Great match here so far. Yes, it is. Winner will compete in our main event later tonight against the Ultra J champion, Logan Easton Moreau. 
in the finals of this summer long tournament. One man was to wrestle twice in one night and win both matchups to have his name join the likes of Roy Wilkins, Eric Roy, Brad Attitude, Trevor Lee, Rick Converse, Corey Edsel, and so many others who have won this prestigious tournament. This is the 14th annual Weaver Cup Tournament cover. Oh, that was close. Great clothesline to set up that near fall. Yes, it was. A little extra zip in, in Ethan Sharp tonight. A little extra oomph in his blows. I think you hit the nail on the head, to be quite honest with you. I think Ethan Sharp is somebody who for so long felt he was entitled and now uh, has sort of come to the realization that, that, hey, I may have to prove myself against these people. I may have to, you know, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's weird. It's certainly unexpected. Uh, but perhaps the most surprising thing in this whole story, Sister Scott, is Ethan Sharp arguably is enjoying his greatest career success to date this summer with this new attitude. Right, he, he finally got serious and it's paid dividends for him. Yeah. Sterling goes sternum first in the top turnbuckle. Yeah, he didn't let Chad fight out of that. Mm. Sterling trying to be defensive in the turnbuckle. I would have never guessed that Chet Sterling would be in a defensive position like this, but he's been on the defense for a lot of this matchup. This is the second time he's gone to the ropes. Oh, he got caught. Oh, he got caught in the bear bag. Yeah, got him in the bear bag. Great defensive move. That leaping oh. jawbreaker. Cover two. No, sir. Good Lord, this crowd thought that was all. That was close, and honestly, Ethan had so much trouble rolling Chet over. I think that gave Chet the extra second he needed. And Ethan's lost his damn mind. Yeah, Sharp cackling like a madman. May have just thought he played his best card. And now what? And Ethan's on, he's never really played with a full deck, I don't think. Hey, can that works just as well? Yes, it does. We've already seen one matchup tonight and on a forfeit. Smith Garrett withdrawing from the tournament due to injury. As Logan Easton Moreau has already illustrated, you can advance. Heck, you can even win by any way. It never happened in the history of the Weaver Cup, but should the finals be decided by a forfeit, a count out, a disqualification, that's it. That's the tournament. It does not have to be a pinfall or submission. It's never happened in Weaver Cup history, but a count out or disqualification works the same. In the oh, man. Finals, ooh, we're the finals. And also unprecedented, say these two go to a draw. Oh, jeez. If these two fight to a 20-minute draw, I'm walking out the door and somebody else can, can be in charge of this. I swear to God. If these two go to a 20-minute draw and we hand Logan Leroux that trophy, yeah, I think I'm putting Bruce Mitchell in charge for the rest of the night. I'm going home. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, Ethan, all the way up. This is dangerous for both men. Oh, man, he stuck him. Yeah, even on the superplex, Sharp had that extra spring in his step. That extra, oh. Ethan Sharp is here to win it. Like it or not, Chet Sterling down, Ethan Sharp down. Both men. First man to a cover here will, will potentially win this matchup, move on to the finals. And honestly, no matter what happens here, I think we've got to look at Ethan Sharp in a new light. I, I think he's really turned over a new leaf here, and he might have it! Two! No! I gotta say, those two counts are getting longer. We're 10 minutes gone, and I, I hate to say it, but you're right, Cecil. This thing could go to 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we can't change the rules just because of circumstance. Oh, God, Chad is unloading on Ethan Sharp! The former Ultra J champion firing away here! Oh! Man. We're up there, we just call that a kitchen sink. Man, hold on. Woo! Sharp trying to get back to his feet. He knows he's vulnerable. Chad Sterling must advance and does. Man, that kick might have ventured a little low. Huge knee lift. Sharp struggling to stay on his feet. Sterling, here he comes. No, oh, the space tank, they don't go. I think he's got it. One, two, no. See, Chet, I think Chet hurt himself. He had to readjust on that pin and it started the count over. He momentarily repositioned and it cost him a valuable second. Yeah, Pierce had to start over on the count. 
Jed has had his greatest success in this matchup coming off the ropes. Thus far, he met the bareback earlier. No. He just go for the rough rider there. Whoa! There's an uppercut! Good lord, Sharp Man knocked him out! He ate the Sharp Man knocked him out! It has won him every match in this tournament! And look at Chad Sterling going to the outside! And that's that's where you so we've seen that extra experience that Chad has gained, that veteran presence. Chad Sterling knows he got his bell wrong and he's going to the outside. And Ethan. I don't know if that's why as he chased him out. He may have gotten a count out there. The stakes are so high. Cover two. No. Valuable seconds paid off for Chet Sterling. That was actually a very, very good veteran move by Chet Sterling. Look at Sterling, though. Look at his eyes. Oh, he's choking away is sharp. He'll have to break that before the five count. Now we're seeing the desperation by Ethan Sharp. He, You're he's, exactly right. He's risking such a great match and none of it's worked. He can't get discouraged. Oh, you're right, he cannot. Ethan, he, well, so far he's stayed right on top of the man. He's not letting it get to him. Ethan Sharp still got some quickness to him, but eats another boot. Face, oh! oh! Sucked him right in the jaw, dude. Sterling! Oh, cocked him. Woo, blockbuster, no! Missed it again! Oh! Boy. Cradle shoulders are down! They got it! Quick thinking, saved the match earlier, and it won the match just now! What a match! Did not take the loss well. No, Ethan Sharp fought throughout this whole tournament. I, we, we can't take anything away from Ethan Sharp. He fought his way through this tournament, but things did not go his way tonight. Hold on, heads up, heads up. Oh, God, into the post. Ethan Sharp tackling like a madman on the outside. Sterling's face just hit the steel. Good Lord. Chad Sterling is down, and he must come back later tonight in the finals. The Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium is the number one venue for live pro wrestling in all of the Carolinas. But did you know that you can also rent the Sportatorium for all of your anniversaries, fundraisers, and live pro wrestling birthday parties? Check us out at CWF247.com to find out more about how you can have your event right here at the Sportatorium. Slower, more enthusiasm. Come on now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on his historic 433 day reign as your okay. CWF Worldwide Television Champion, accompanied by the 17 time greatest Mid Atlantic Heavyweight Champion in the history of CWF, Lee Downey. History, but all of wrestling history, a real man's man, the incomparable and debonair Eric Andrews. Stand up for your champion! 
Johnson. Yeah. 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 Well, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, the way we do things around here is the challenger for the Worldwide Television Championship is drawn at random by one of our VIP fans. I've got one of our VIP fans right here. Draw any challenger you would like, sir. Our challenger tonight for the Worldwide Television Championship will be... Innocent Isaiah! Up. 
Oh, there you go. He went low. That's a pretty smart move. Yeah, another drop kick at the belt line. And face first into the canvas. Goes the way on television. Champ. Cover two. Oh, boy, he got two. Isaiah Rice is hoping we're all the same size when we're laying down. Did he now? I don't know what he meant. Isaiah's got Andrews mounted here. Got the legs. Grapevine. Some good old wrestling there from Innocent Isaiah. Eric Andrews trying to break out of this hole, but the leg strength, Isaiah has got that man right where he wants him. Yeah, extremely strong legs. He's been doing his squats, I understand. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Been doing his squats. You know, unfortunately, he recently split with his all-time partner, Bob Crockett. Uh, maybe he found a new partner here tonight. Maybe. Maybe he's leaving out here. Come on, Eric. Kill this five. We can leave. I'm comfortable. He's not comfortable. Imagine that. I don't know. I've been in some pretty sticky situations with Lee Valiant back in the day. I was about to go there. Swing and a miss. Isaiah, nice, nice diving clothesline there. Isaiah has very well uh, used the ropes, used everything to his advantage. Valiant's got the foot. And he knew he was going to get his cheap shot in. Club him right in the back of the head. I'm not familiar with this referee filling, filling in for the injured Red Jones. I want to send a get well shout out to Red Jones recovering from surgery. Uh, it, what kind of cover was that? Tentative cover. God, he, he's, he's like he was in there with a leper for crying out loud. Come on, Eric. I don't even have this young man's name. We'll try to referee him. We'll, we'll try to get that before we go off the air. Big knee drop right in the face. And another cover. I'm looking at that hair, he might be Bruce Mitchell's kid. That's possible. Isaiah, fighting back here. Putting his shoulder into it. Andrews clubs him back down. Yeah, Isaiah showed a lot of toughness. This is a big opportunity for him. The singles title matches don't come along often for Innocent Isaiah. Oh, and he goes to the floor all the way. Watch out on the far side, Lee Valiant, right in front of the VIP fans, putting the boots. What a scumbag. Confirmed scumbag. And Andrews is halfway through this television title bout. Put on the face, not, not a cover. cover. Yeah, not a cover. Perhaps no television champion in history has basically worked that 10 minute time limit to their favor as well as expertly as Eric Andrews has. Right, and not so much of that he plays for the draw, but he, he's good at drawing to the end of it. Time management. Yeah, time management. He puts his opponent in, in an under pressure situation. Oh, God! Play. Two, no! Andrews! Threw the shoulder up. Yeah. Once you hit that nine minute mark, the pressure's on the challenger. Positively so, Isaiah! Oh, no, no, he caught it. My God. Andrew shut it down. Two, no. I say it with a great showing here. But man, he's got to find some offense. Otherwise, it's going to go out pretty quick. Andrew's going to be looking for the asphalt spike. Stalking his man here. One step better than a sidewalk slam. It's the asphalt spike. Oh, went to the toes. Isaiah trying to stay alive here. Went to the other toes. He can't get him up. Isaiah not letting him have the asphalt spike. Just two boots in the backside. Oh, nice drop kick, but the big man's still up. Andrews has that size advantage. Isaiah. Oh. Stop it. Oh, wait. No, he wasn't stopped. Yeah, I thought he was out of gas, but he took that leg out. Oh, good Lord. Dropped all his body weight on the spine of Andrews. Very unique offense here. Isaiah's cooking here. Nice open hand palm strikes here. Slapping the crap out of him. And he's finally down. Andrews. The only thing holding him up is the buckle. Hold on. Shades of Amber O'Neill. Andrew's fighting to stay alive now. Wheelbarrow. Bulldogs it down. He's got a shot here. Yes, he does. Center of the ring. One, two. No, sir. He couldn't get enough weight on that shoulder. Valiant on the apron. Valiant 
later in the apron, Isaiah, that must just divert his attention away from the champion. Oh no, what's gonna happen here? Oh dear. Oh no. Andrews caught him. Eric Andrews. Oh, with the asphalt spy. Two. Got it. And again, with help from Lee Valiant, he finds a way to hold on to this television championship. Yeah, Valiant has helped him on more than one occasion now. And now there's just a two on one mugging on Isaiah. You won the match. Man, we need somebody. We need some help for Isaiah. We need some. Wait a minute. Is that? It's Ron McBride. It's the Boogie Woogie Man. A Boogie Woogie Man with a shot to the television champ and a shot for Lee Valiant. And we've got McBride and Valiant set to go at it. Let's go. Ring the bell. Yeah, it's our scheduled match here. Valiant and McBride set to collide later on in the evening. But the Boogie Man says he's going to go right now. Oh, uh, Lee Valiant. He knows Ron McBride extremely well. And you want to talk about one call right now when it's not. One call, ten minutes time. You want to talk classic CWF. This is a throwback right here. Well, he's been called the godfather of CWF before. Oh, Valiant catches McBride. And amazingly, Cecil Scott, these two CWF originals have never faced off one-on-one -on -one before tonight. Oh, oh God. Oh, you know, top. Oh, he just powered by me. Big Brian Powerball cover. Two. No. Like you said, they've never faced one on one. Believe it or not, through most of their tenures, they've been on the same side of things. They were allies for many, many years. Absolutely. You would never know it from watching the last few years of World War, but there was a time that Lee Elliott was beloved in CWF Mid Atlantic. He stood side by side with Big Brian. Original Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, and numerous wars. Why is Eric Andrews still out here? Right, they are both namesakes of Jimmy Valiant. Oh, Valiant to the back of the knee. I mean, right, if he's going to have a weakness at this point in his career, it's going to be the lower half of his body. Absolutely. There's 30 plus years of miles on those legs. McBride has been in the square circle longer than a lot of us have been breathing. And you're 100% right. Those knees, the elbows, the neck, the back. Oh. But you know what? I've been in the ring with McBride a bunch of times, and that's that one thing you got to watch out for those hands. Oh, yeah. His hands are like cinder blocks. Very much so. Good lord! He has tanned my hide on more than one occasion. My God. Has he now? And he broke my foot. Valiant firing away here. Once again, this is a first time ever matchup. Two former Mid Atlantic champions. Matter of fact, I think both these men are multiple time Mid Atlantic heavyweight champions in their tenure. Yeah, former heavyweight champions, former tag team champions, both of them. Of course, Ron McBride's even Tank Lawson for many years as tag team champions. One of the longest title reigns in the history of the Stadium ever was McBride and Lawson holding those tag team titles. Valiant. Put all his body weight behind it all. The difference is, yes, they're both veterans. They've both been around, but Valiant has had a much more active schedule in the last few couple of years. Cover two. No. Good Lord, he almost had better the official. You know, when you reach a stage of a career like McBride has, a lot of times that rust doesn't matter. You're just, you're just kind of, you gotta know everything already. Valiant, gonna pull the Puggy Woogie Man back to his feet. There may be no one in CWF who can out brawl McBride. Oh, hold up! Oh! How fitting is it? It's this Weaver Cup season. We've got a CWF original of Robin McBride here in the building. Absolutely. Weaver Cup Finals night, a little bit like Legends night for CWF Mid-Atlantic. And we are thrilled to have Rob McBride here with us. And I guess Lee, he's been around a while too. But he's nevertheless, been around already. nevertheless, two CWF originals going at it here on Finals night. 
Bryant going to the apron. Bryant needs to be cautious of that slingshot spear. Bryant is one of Valiant's favorite moves. Valiant. McBride hesitated for just a second and it cost him. There goes a spear. No, he caught it. Yeah, he did. McBride's not going to reinvent the wheel at this point. But he's hard to get off his feet. He's hard to move and maneuver. You can attest to that. Absolutely. I say his hands are like granite. Really, his whole body is at this point. Right. He, he has this deal where he will dare you to chop it as hard as you can, and he doesn't flinch. And then he just lights you up. Okay, McBride going up. Okay, going up. I don't know about this one. Oh, watch out for Andrews. Andrews getting involved in the match. Throw this bum out of here. Wait, Isaiah, hold on. Isaiah's got Andrews. Woo! Oh, no, is McBride going to fly? We've seen four. Oh, God! Oh, God, it's French ship. Look at where we are now. About a year ago, this was yours, Dirty. You were the RGL champion. I was there, there to relish in your moment. Everything was about Dirty back then. And now it's not. A whole year forward, I'm the RGL champion now. Do you remember Battlecade? The match that some say stole the first half of the show. It was such a big moment for both of us. We got to be on the biggest card on this part of the country. Every blow we threw, it counted. It wasn't a long match. It was a short match because we were trying to kill each other to get this. And I, I won. My twist ending secured me this. And ever since, my twist ending has kept this on me. And what have you done, Dirty? What have you done since I beat you for this? Your so time with Snooty Fox. Your all these Chapel Hill shows with Snooty Fox. That's all you have. Failed opportunities. And when it came, last week, when it came, for us to represent CWF like we've been wanting to against AIW in the six-man tag. You embarrassed this company. You embarrassed me, the RGL. You wouldn't fall in line with who is clearly the leader of the team. You kept going about it your way, not seeing the bigger picture, not seeing Kane's picture. I had to do what I had to do. I had to put you down to teach you. And of course, Kane cost the CWF. I'm a disgrace. I'm a poor representative. But Dirty's not. But you're not dirty. Well, I'm used to being the bad guy. I'm used to having everyone put everyone else ahead of me. Well, next week, Dirty. Next week. It'll be me and you again for this title. Do you think it happens any other way? I believe 
a lot of people believe, and I think you know, this match ends like it began at Battlecade. Suffering with a twist ending, and me still forever the Rising Generation League's champion. Time. He is fresh as a daisy. Just started with the war earlier with Ethan Alexander Sharp. Yeah, you're right. Logan Easton Rowe has not broken a sweat yet. One percent drop kicking right in the face. Cover. Two. No, sir. Logan Easton Rowe has had one match in this tournament before tonight. He's weeks ago. Weeks, weeks ago. ago. Chess Sterling has gone through three battles to get to this point. Yeah, you said it earlier in the broadcast, and quite frankly, I think you're right. Chess Sterling has had the roughest path of anyone. Don't do it again. Referee giving Logan Easton LaRoe some attitude. I like it. Now we know Chess Sterling has the endurance, he has the heart, he has the stamina. But man, it's a tough hill to climb against a guy he's had a hard time figuring out. Yeah, Logan Easton Moreau, of course, captured the Ultra J Championship from Sterling months ago at Nova Pro Wrestling up in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Chet Sterling has a huge chance to redeem himself here tonight. The Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium, he telegraphed the elbow and he paid for it. Yeah, maybe a little too much distance there as well. Pro Wrestling International President William L. Cross presented the trophy at the conclusion of this championship bout. We've seen Cross and Michael McAllister throughout the tournament. Oh. Oh. Shot spear, cover, two! Very happy to have this thing oh, sanctioned by Pro Wrestling International, our governing body, pwipro.com, for all the information on every Pro Wrestling International event around the globe. The row has looked great thus far. Yes, he has. Pump kick, no. Down, there you go. Chad Sterling just raining down, fist to the face. Man, he's got to be careful not to expend so much. He can't expend so much energy in his state right now. Mm. Gotta watch the close fist. A oh, beautiful German with a bridge. Two, no. And that was textbook. Beautiful German super. Sterling is so fired up, Cecil Scott. He's got to be careful. Yeah, he may cause himself to run out of whatever gas he has left. Not to mention. Referee's taking no breath from anybody. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure about this referee. We've never seen him before, but he seems to really be taking charge out there. I like it. He got himself a spot here, even after Red Jones took the break from surgery. Logan East on the road. Got this thing in control. Jack Sterling put himself up in the corner. Logan East on the road continues to talk to the crowd. Firing away here. Moreau won the Commonwealth Cup earlier this year up in Northern Virginia. A beautiful surplex to no. Yeah, 
Yeah, so he's tournament tested. He remains the only man to pin Eric Royal in Nova Pro Wrestling. Absolutely. The ace of the Mid-Atlantic, undefeated for nearly two years until he ran into the champion of the 1%, Logan Easton Leroux. And Logan East, you know, He's in a good position where he can take his time and grind on, on his chest. I can't even talk tonight. Chet Sterling. He can kind of take his time, grind the man down, not expend too much energy. Right? And he knows Chet's going to have to expend double the energy to get back into this thing. And Sterling already fought for, I think it was like about 12 and a half minutes earlier in this broadcast against Ethan Sharp. It was extremely game. And he went face first into the post after that match. Yes, he did. Chet Sterling has taken a beating tonight. Logan firing up. Chet Sterling showing that fire. Oh, oh, went to the arm and the ribs there. Chet Sterling. Got to think a lot of pride here to not get beat by Logan Easton Leroux again. Oh, huge insecurity. To not get beat by Logan here in his home arena. Oh, soared through the ropes. Did the champion of the 1%, the Pro Wrestling International Ultra J champion, soared through the ropes. I'm a concerned at how, how weak the legs of Chet Sterling were there. But I know this is something that Chet Sterling covers. He was so close to beating Roy Wilkins in 2015 to win this thing. That's right, he got all the way to the finals. He was cheated out of that. Is he going to get conned again here by Logan East Moreau with this, this breeze of a tournament he's had? And you know you win the Weaver Cup. Oh, watch out, Chet Sterling. Oh, Sterling off the top! Good Lord! Flung him hard away across the ring! He wins the Weaver Cup. He's got a shot at the one title he has not won, and that is the heavyweight title. Trevor Lee will defend the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Championship next week here on CWF Worldwide against the winner of a huge second chance six way. Six men not invited to participate in this tournament will fight it out for a title shot. But the catch is the title shot comes immediately. That will be next week, right here tonight. Title is on the line. Boom! Stuck him on the close fist! Did Sterling! Ring the bell! What the shit? Ring the bell. What? Ring the bell! Wait, what? Wait, what just happened? What the? Is he calling for a DQ? He said I warned him. Chet Sterling has been disqualified in the finals of the Weaver Cup tournament? Are you serious right now? Chet Sterling has been This referee in. I don't know. Well, the referee's decision is final. I mean, this crowd is furious. Pardon, pardon my friends, but what the hell was that? Yeah, well, Close Fest is illegal. Oh, God. I don't recall him warning him about a fist. No, he, uh, well, uh, he says he did. Well, I understand you're the official. Never and seen this official guy. supposedly what they say go. But Brad, so where do you find this guy? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I didn't find this guy. You found this guy. He's an official. Yeah. I'm an official. I'm an official. I didn't hire him. I thought you did. I didn't hire him. I thought you did. Is this guy even a referee? He's an official. Look at his head. But my question is, is he your official? I won this cup because Chet Sterling cheated. If you don't work for me, and you don't work for him, then who do you work for? I won this cup.
Williams. We had a bogus referee. I don't know how that slipped through the cracks. Major attention to detail there. Match has restarted. Here come the finalists. This thing's restarted here with a real referee. Nice pressure. Oh, dear. Oh, I counted Chet Starling's in it. Chet Starling says not tonight. Not in my home. Not in front of my fans. And not on some BS decision from a crooked not referee. Red Jones has missed the whole summer after surgery. I think a cross found the guy. And everything goes to hell in a handbasket here. And the SCO, anybody have him? Duck him on the top of his head. Two, no! Chet has his second win here. Jesus Christ, McAllister kicked the crap out of that guy, whoever he was. Yeah, the, yeah, the fury came out there, for real. Off the top, ooh. Logan still, as we all try to catch our breath, hit him out at the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium. Logan Easton Moreau knows what to look for. He knows he must avoid the blockbuster. He knows he must avoid the Rough Rider. You gotta think that's what Sterling was thinking on the top row. Absolutely, he's faced Sterling enough times, he knows he's done the scouting report. Lord, I'm out of breath. I was almost caught in a line of fire. McAllister killing that guy. Despite being a con artist, the guy is still very capable. And he's still in the finals. And he could still win this thing. The kneecap. Oh, jeez, on the face. And he couldn't get his hand up to defend himself. Cover real close to the ropes. Pierce is not going to count it. Two. Well, you got to think referee Kevin Pierce is not going to allow any shenanigans at this point. There can be no controversy at this point. Now, LaRoe's got to be careful not to get DQ'd himself. You can't put your hands on the official. What poetic justice would that be? Normally, I hate DQs, but that would be this just desserts. no! Logan, Easton LaRoe, the man who took the Ultra J title from Sterling, talking smack! Caught the foot! Woo! The shot kicked him right on the jaw! Yeah, Logan couldn't get his foot unhooked from that rope. Good lord. Wait, Rough Rider got nothing. Oh, nice sunset flip. Two, no! Logan's still the fresher man, obviously. He's a lot quicker getting back to his feet. He controlled a lot of this matchup. Oh, the half downs in the half and suplex! Good lord, dropped him right on his head. Sterling could be the high fly throw. This is why he sent Cedric Alexander out of the Carolinas. Woo! Dead center, two, got it! Chad Sterling through hell in a handbasket has won the 2017 Johnny Weaver Cup Tournament. Fighting through everything that the 1% could throw at him. Check 